What is going on everybody? It is Mike. Welcome back to Tech 24 7 TV. It is great to have you back here today. Now, if you are coming from an older iPhone, say an iPhone 6, 7, 8, maybe even the iPhone 10, and that device is getting a little long in the tooth, you're wondering whether or not you should upgrade to the latest offering from Cupertino, like the iPhone 12, the iPhone 12 Pro, you are in the right place because in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and lay out all the features from the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro, tell you which device I like, and lay out some scenarios where depending on what device you're coming from, I'll tell you whether or not you should upgrade. Let's get started. Welcome back to Tech 24 7 TV, where we bring you the best in unboxing and product reviews so you can make informed buying decisions. Here on this channel, we do the analysis of the various bits and bytes that transcend technology only to find their way into your pocket. Now, if you like product review videos, just like this iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro video that you're watching right now, make sure you are subscribed, ring that notification bell so you can be alerted when new content drops. Now, let's be honest here. The majority of people considering upgrading to the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro are probably coming from older devices, which means that the new features are all the more significant when comparing the latest from Cupertino from the likes of the iPhone 6, 7, 8, and even the iPhone 10. Now, the first distinguishable difference that you are going to see with the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro is going to be the design. Gone are the rounded corners that made the previous iPhones just so recognizable in exchange for that old yet new design here on the iPhone 12. Its flat sides make your iPhone stand straight up to attention, which I am sure a fan of. I like the design on the iPhone 12 for all of the same reasons. The device feels excellent in your hands. The gestures are smooth. It's very polished. It's a great experience using this. Now, if you come from an iPhone that had a Touch ID sensor, this obviously doesn't have Touch ID. It's going to be using Face ID. Now, that's going to be, I think, a stretch for some people because they love having Touch ID. And I can't really blame them, especially in today's world where we have to wear masks when we're out and about. Uh, but this is still a good experience. Now, Face ID on the front of the iPhone 12 is not necessarily a different sensor that was used in the previous generation, the iPhone 11, the iPhone 10, but I would say that it is highly optimized with iOS 14, so where you're gonna get a better experience. The iPhone 12 comes in a host of different colors, including blue that you see here, product red, white, black, and green, whereas the iPhone 12 Pro comes in this awesome gold color, which I'm a huge fan of, graphite, silver, and Pacific blue. Now, really the differences between the two phones in terms of finish are very negligible. Uh, here on the back, this is gonna be frosted glass. This is all stainless steel band. It's gonna be a glass back, where here, this is gonna be aluminum back and an aluminum sides. Now, I like the matte sides of the iPhone 12 opposed to the polished sides of the iPhone 12 Pro. That's just personal preference. I would love to know from you which one you prefer better down in the comments below. Now the display is gonna have the most recognizable differences for anyone coming from an older iPhone. If you look at this display, it is a 6.1 inch OLED with Apple coins as a Super Retina XDR display. This has a display resolution of 2532 by 1170 and it maintains a very dense 460 pixels per inch. Now the display quality along with both devices supporting a peak brightness of 1200 nits really makes enjoying almost any content, but especially HDR content, extremely enjoyable. Simply put, the display is very bright, it's color accurate thanks to supporting the P3 color gamut, and it has a 2 million to 1 contrast ratio, which again, plays into the fact of that having the very deep blacks and the very bright highlights. Practically speaking, you're gonna have a great experience on either one of these devices for everyday use. Now the one caveat here, of course there's always a caveat, if you choose the iPhone 12 versus the 12 Pro, the iPhone 12 has a higher display brightness under typical conditions of 800 nits compared to 600 nits on the iPhone 12. Now you're probably wondering yourself, what is a nit and what does that even really mean? It's how bright the display will get under typical conditions. Now, unless you find yourself working outside, maybe uh, you're always camping, you're hiking, you're on a bike, uh, there's not gonna be a tremendous amount of difference between 600 nits and 800 nits. And the thing is that if you have this display always cranked up that it is brighter, it is gonna go ahead and consume your battery at a higher rate, but I'll get more into that when we talk about the battery on this device. Now, if you need a point of comparison between 600 nits on the iPhone 12 and 800 nits on the iPhone 12 Pro, I can tell you this. Both the 2018 and the 2020 iPad Pro all have display brightnesses of 600 nits. So you are getting something that is gonna be as bright as all those other devices. It's the iPhone 12 Pro, which is really going above and beyond, right? It's more pro in terms of display brightness. Now, I would say that again, you're not necessarily gonna notice this under everyday conditions. It's really only gonna be in under certain conditions when you find yourself outside viewing the display in again, direct sunlight. I think that's probably gonna be the most uh, applicable area of that. Now for me, 
I don't necessarily have that, uh, that use case and I'm not always viewing my phone in direct bright sunlight. Now the next place where you're gonna see the most significant differences between the two devices is gonna be the cameras. Now each of these phones have the same two primary cameras, the same wide and the same ultra wide. It's gonna be an f2.4 and f1.6 for the wide and ultra wide respectively. Under ideal lighting conditions, it's really hard to find a camera nowadays that doesn't perform really good. When you are in a more challenging environment where it's a little bit low light, it might be dark outside, you are gonna have better performance with a camera lens that allows more light in. Each of these phones have the same exact camera lens system on here. Now the difference is on the iPhone 12 Pro, you're gonna get a telephoto. Now that telephoto is gonna have a f2.0 aperture. Now practically speaking, most people probably won't have use for that camera, but if you have use for that camera, you probably already know that you do. You're a content creator, you're an Instagrammer, you're someone who records you know, video a lot that's where you're gonna see better performance on this camera. Now I can tell you that uh, other than photography performance, the next biggest difference is gonna be video performance. Now both of these, again, since they have the same camera system on the device, they are gonna to, going to perform well from a videography standpoint. The difference is that here on the iPhone 12, it's gonna capture Dolby Vision HDR at 30 frames per second on any of the two cameras. Here it's gonna be at uh, on any of the three cameras at 60 frames per second. All you gotta do is know that each of these cameras are gonna take great photos no matter what you point at it. Now the next area where you're gonna see the biggest differences in terms of camera performance is gonna be with auto focusing in low light conditions with the iPhone 12 Pro thanks to the LiDAR sensor. Now here on the back of the iPhone 12 Pro you see three cameras, a wide, an ultra wide, and a telephoto. Then here at the bottom, this is gonna be a LiDAR sensor that is used for depth mapping of scenes when you're taking photos or video. Now this is gonna allow you to get better performance from the camera, whether it's in low light conditions or very kind of challenging conditions. Not to say that the iPhone 12 will perform poorly, but it won't perform as well as the iPhone 12 Pro. Depending on which iPhone that you are coming from, your older iPhone 6, 7, 8 can have anywhere between 1800 milliamp hours to 2600 milliamp hours, whether or not you have the regular size or the plus. Now the battery in the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro is exactly the same at 2,815 milliamp hours. The battery size is just one thing, but how much energy it uses uh, is gonna be another thing. Now I've been able to get better battery life out of the iPhone 12 versus the iPhone 12 Pro, and I believe that's actually gonna be to the way the display brightness works and a typical brightness that we talked about a few minutes ago. Here where if I have, it's gonna be 800 uh, nits of brightness, in typical conditions, if I have my uh, battery meter turned up or my brightness turned up to 80%, here I have the same thing, 80%. 80% 80 of 800 nits is I think 620, 80% of 600 nits is gonna be 480. So I am actually using more energy on the iPhone 12 Pro versus the iPhone 12 to keep my battery at relatively 80% on either device. And at the end of the day, I'm still going to bed at 11 o'clock. I still have around 30 to 40% battery life on the iPhone 12 Pro versus around 50% on the iPhone 12. And I mean, it lasts me all day, so I still get one day's worth of whole usage. So my experiences over the past two weeks have been pretty consistent. I'm getting around five hours of screen on time between both devices, but the iPhone 12 versus the iPhone 12 Pro getting a little bit better battery performance. Now, if you are still rocking an older iPhone, like the iPhone 6, iPhone 7, iPhone 8, heck, even the iPhone 10, I think the upgrades and the upgrade path from those older devices to the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro are pretty clear, but I'm just gonna go over the benefits for you. The A14 processor in the iPhone 12 is ridiculously fast. There's no other way to put it. It is faster than most things that you will come across. It is advanced enough where you can keep this for three, four, five years, and you're gonna have a sufficient amount of computing power in your pocket for a long time to come. I think that if you have one of these older devices, coupled with the battery performance that you're probably getting at this point, is really, I think, the, the biggest impetus to go ahead and upgrade. I would think that someone coming from the iPhone 6, iPhone 7, iPhone 8, you're really gonna love the camera updates. You know, you're getting the addition of having you know, two lenses or being able to do portrait mode on two lenses or three lenses, depending on which device you choose. You're getting a larger display at 6.1 inches compared to 4.7 inches on the regular size iPhone or even at 5.8 on the plus versions. You're getting a larger battery. You're getting better performance from the A14 processor. You're getting uh, the neural engine. You're also having two, possibly th three cameras, depending on which device that you're going to. So there's a whole host of strong benefits to upgrading from the iPhone 6, the iPhone 7, the iPhone 8, uh, to the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro. If you're someone who is a content creator, you know, you're someone who takes photos, maybe you have kids like I do, 
the iPhone 12 Pro might be the better choice for you because you find yourself in more challenging situations. Kids never sit still for longer than five seconds, at least mine don't, but I imagine that yours are the same way too. If you're into photography already, you wanna go ahead and think about choosing the iPhone 12 Pro over the 12 because that's gonna get Apple Pro Raw, Apple's new RAW uh, supported camera format for the iPhones uh, later this year. For me, I have kids, I do a lot of photography, I do videography outside of uh, just doing this, and I like to have the best camera available in my pocket, which is why I would choose the iPhone 12 Pro. For everyday use, you know, if I'm getting it for my wife, I'm getting it for my mom, my dad, I'm gonna get them the iPhone 12 because it's a great phone with a great camera, and it's give them capabilities that they don't have today. For many people, this is a very easy consideration. Again, just having better battery performance, being able so where it doesn't get ramped down in terms of performance, is benefit to me. Now, I would love to know from you, what device are you upgrading from? What device are you upgrading to? Down in the comments below, because there are many different people who have older iPhones that are still on the fence. And if, you know, maybe you have a use case that someone could benefit from, let me know down below. As I mentioned, a lot of other content coming for the iPhone mini, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, those new Macs that are coming out tomorrow, in addition to many accessory builds. I am Mike, this is Tech 24-7 TV. I will talk to you in the next one. <sighs> that doesn't even make sense.